What's up guys? Today I'm going to be playing a game called Magium. It's a kind of like a story you read and then you choose what you want to do at the end of each chapter or part of the story. So today I'm going to start at chapter 1 and yeah, we're going to read through it and see what happens. Um, mind you, I'm not very good at reading out loud so bear with me. Alright, so the story starts off. So they say it they say there is a very fine line between bravery and stupidity. As I stand here in the middle of the forest, gazing at all the explosions far in the distance, I realize I may well have crossed that line to a point of no return. My name is Barry. I am 28 years old, and I could quite accurately be described as your everyday ordinary guy. I have no talents, no particular skills, and no academic background. The only thing that defines me is my lifelong obsession to become a mage. It is what I've wished for ever since I was five years old. It has been my driving passion throughout my life as I've constantly amassed knowledge about mages and traveled the world in the hopes of finding a way to make my dream come true. After endless years of searching through dusty tomes and weathered parchments, I have finally found a way to do it. The catch? I need to first win a tournament against a powerful, against the most powerful mages in the world. Sounds crazy. That's probably because it is. But it is far too late to go back now. The only way that's left for me is forward. As I stand here knowing that it's no longer possible to return to my normal life, I can't help but feel quite... Well, we got excited, calm, and afraid. Oh, let's go with afraid. Afraid. Deep down, I always knew this would happen. I've been spending the past few weeks getting mentally prepared and making plans, telling myself I was ready for whatever this tournament is going to throw at me. But once I got here, once I knew there was no way for me to go back, all my confidence turned into uncertainty, and all my courage turned into fear. I am going up against the strongest mages in the world. No, um, no amount of planning could ever really make me prepared for this. But it's too late to change my mind now. I've had enough time to go back, to back out of this before coming here. I'm going to win this tournament against all odds. I'm going to do it. I just have to. There's an explosion maybe a few hundred feet from my location. The fights have already begun, and one of them is much closer to me than I would have hoped. There's no way I can get in a fight with any of the mages at this point. I need to avoid combat for as long as possible if I am to survive until the end. I head in the opposite direction from where I've heard the explosion. As I am headed towards the end of the forest, I start hearing voices. There are two mages talking in a clear... In a clearing a few feet away from me, I hide behind a tree to take a quick glance towards the clearing. It seems the two mages have just finished fighting. One of them has the appearance of an ordinary thug. He is wearing a simple stained white shirt, leather pants, and a belt full of throwing knives. His untrimmed black beard hides a wicked smile. Just by seeing the confidence in his eyes, I can clearly tell he, he is the victor of the skirmish. The other mage is wearing heavy armor and his shield lies on the ground besides, beside him and he is barely holding his sword anymore. Taking a closer look at the mage in the armor, I notice the head is bald. His skin is dark, he is likely the mid-forties and he has a scar on his forehead shaped like an X. I've read of a mage matching his exact description who went by the name of Darren. And he was quite legendary, but would he lose so easily to a common thug? The mage in the white shirt answers my question as he addresses the one in the armor, while casually playing with one of his knives. The legendary Darren. The legendary mage Darren, the savior of the eastern continent, the healer in armor. They say you've traveled the world, yet saving countless villages from destruction. That you once fought ten rock golems by yourself, only to defend a small child. I guess this goes to show you should never really trust legends, eh? I always knew all those tales about mages as strong as giants would, were just 
called Swallow. Hell, if all the legendary matches that join this tournament as weak as you, I'm going to win this by Sunday. He starts laughing but stops suddenly. Wait, who's there? He says as he turns towards me. I quickly pull my head back behind the tree and press my back against it, trying to breathe as silently as possible. I know you're there, Carrot. Show yourself, or I'll have to throw one, of, or I'll have one of my knives find you. And we have three choices: so stay silent, show myself. I see no reason to show myself to you. Let's go with the last one again. I see no reason to show myself to you. I tell him. As he pinpoints my location from the sound of my voice, the mage makes a rather long pause before speaking again. A still water, eh? He says, finally. Finally. He tried hard to keep his composure when asking his question, but the tremor in his voice betrayed him. He is afraid. His sudden change of attitude towards me is not completely unexpected. The existence of still waters is one of the main reasons I've dared to dream that I might have a chance to win this tournament. Stillwaters are a very rare breed of mages that are known to, to be incredibly powerful. One of them is said to have destroyed an entire city in an instant some 20 years ago with only a flick of his finger. The city of Ol Olmnar was said to have been one of the greatest cities in this continent, but it was wiped off the face of the map, wiped off the map just like that in a single second. Such is the power of these stillwaters. But what is even more interesting about these still waters is that you can't di di differentiate them from normal humans. Normally you can sense a mage, sense the magic flowing from every being. You don't need to be a mage to do it. By sensing their magical aura, you can tell how strong mages are before engaging them in a fight. Still waters, however, have the same aura as normal humans. And if you were to run into someone that seems to have almost no magic in the middle of what is essentially a greatest magic, greatest maze tournament in all of history, what, what would you be more inclined to believe? That an average human was somehow suicidal enough to join a tournament only to get massacred? Or that you are facing one of the strongest and rarest kinds of mages that exist in this world? You don't scare me, Stillwater. I'm going to fill you with holes you end up, and you'll end up begging me for mercy. I bet your legends are no more true than they were for this sad excuse of a mage standing next to me. And I get two choices this time. Give him until the count of ten to retreat. Imply that I'm one who destroyed the city of Alnair. Let's see if we can put some fear in him. Gonna be the one who destroyed the city. That's funny, I tell him. That's almost the same thing the people of Omnar told me before I burned their city to the ground. After I said that, there's a long pause in which none of us none of us says anything. You're bluffing, the mage says. I guess there's only one way to find out then, I tell him, as I feel my heart pounding in my chest. The few seconds of silence that followed felt like the longest seconds of my life. After a long pause, the mage says finally, You're in luck, Stillwater. I'm feeling merciful today. I'm going to be out of your hair just as soon as I finish this guy here. You do that and you'll regret it, I say without thinking. My last sentence seems to have taken him aback. What, are you kidding me? You're going to defend this low life? If I have to, do I have to? I'll continue. The mage once again falls silent. He doesn't seem to want to push his luck any further. After a while, I hear him put his daggers back into his belt and then spit on the ground. I'll remember this, Stillwater. Don't think I won't. You'll rule the day you messed with Cutthroat Dave. And the same goes for you, Healer and Armor. I'll be seeing you, seeing the both of you again soon. After he finishes his speech, he turns away in disgust as he heads into the woods on the opposite side of the clearing. Once I can no longer see the mage, I let out a big sigh. That was close. That was really close. I could still feel my heart beating rapidly in my chest. You do that, and you'll regret it. What was I even thinking? Was I trying to get myself killed? This is a life or death tournament, Barry. This is not the time for you to start playing hero. 
As I try to calm myself down, the mage in the armor sheathes his sword, picks up his shield from the ground, and starts walking towards me. You had no obligation to save me, he says. But you did so anyway, at the risk of your own life. I cannot let such a selflessness go unrewarded. I, Darren, vow this day that I will offer you my protection from this moment, and until the end of this tournament. Tell me, brave soul, what is your name? His speech took me by surprise. It's, uh, it's Barry. My name is Barry. Wait, your name's Barry? He tries to contain his laughter, but fails miserably. He was trying to sound solemn and dignified just a few seconds ago, but it seems it didn't really take him long to drop his act. Now that's the weirdest name for a mage I've heard in my life, especially for a Stillwater. Do you have something you want to tell me, Barry? And we got two choices. It says, tell him I'm actually an ordinary human. Tell him my parents are, had a weird sense of humor. Uh, let's go with the truth. See what he says. Tell him that he's an ordinary human. I'm not a Stillwater, Darren. That thug just assumed I was, and I took advantage of the situation. But you're not one of the locals either. Otherwise, that spell of theirs would have alerted us the moment we sensed your presence. He is still talking about the spell the organizers of. He is talking about the spell the organizers of the tournament cast on each of the participants before teleporting us here. We aren't allowed to hurt the humans that live on this continent, so their spell warns us when one of them is near. If what they said can be believed, their spell is supposed to stop us even before we try hurting any of the locals. If it's accidental, then it's then it simply stops us before doing it. If it's intentional, it eliminates us from the tournament and sends us back. Their spell is also supposed to act as a means of communication with the organizers. They say they'll transmit the objectives to each of the individuals. It's funny, all of those careful preparations on their side, and they never even bothered to check if I was a mage or not. Hell, what am I saying? They probably didn't even care. So you must be a participant, then, Darren says. What reason would you have to participate in a tournament against the, against the most powerful mages in the world? I am after the same thing as every other participant in this tournament, Darren. But I'm not sure how wise it would be to tell you of this. I'm after the prize that's being offered to the winner, the mag Magium. Nobody knows exactly what it looks like or what it's made of, but everyone knows the fact that it is a source of source of all magic in the world and that it can be only and that it can only be found on the continent of Varathia. All mages seek it, they crave it. They are cert they are certain that if they have access to it, they can increase their powers a hundredfold and become living legends. And although it is, co it is a common misconception that the Magium is only useful for learned mages, my studies have led me to believe that the Magium is so extraordinary that it can even turn a normal human into a mage. I've searched very long for a way to get into Varathia, but the only way, you, the only way one can travel to their continent is by receiving a direct invitation. Very few of those are sent yearly and the people being teleported there are being held under direct supervision for the duration of their stay, and return with no information regarding the coordinates of the place. But when all hope seemed lost, the announcement came, a worldwide announcement by the kings of Arathia, that they were organizing a tournament where every single mage in the world was invited, and a winner would be granted access to the Magium. I knew then that there would never be another chance like this. Why did you join this tournament, Barry? Darren asked me again. Okay, we have three choices. It says tell him the truth, tell him I was forced into it, or tell him I'm looking for a cure for my sick sister. Uh, what to choose? Well, let's tell him the truth, I guess. I'm after the same thing as you, Darren, I tell him. After the ma I'm after the Magium. 
It's been my dream ever since I was little to become a mage, and Imagium can grant me that wish. Come on, Barry. You're going to have to make up a better lie than that if you want me to believe you. He stops and looks me straight in the eye. By the gods, you are being serious. Barry, I commend your bravery and determination, but you do realize you can't win the entire tournament just by bluffing, don't you? Of course I know that. That's not the only ace I have up my sleeve. But what about you? They say you are one of the strongest mages in the world, so how does one as strong as you get bested so easily by someone named Cutthroat Dave? <laughs> he is sounding embarrassed. You see, Barry, I may be powerful, but that doesn't mean I don't have my weaknesses. It turns out one of those weaknesses is that I never really managed to master the shield spell properly. The shield spell. Alright, I had to take a short break there for a minute. I'm going to finish this off. Uh, the shield spell. The one that casts an invisible protective layer around yourself. But isn't that the one that the first spells... Isn't that one of the first spells any mage learns? Continue. It is, but it's not like I can't cast it at all. I can defend from magic just fine. It's normal weapons that I have a problem with. This is why I wear armor. This is why I use a sword and shield. I first started using them because I couldn't use the shield spell properly, but soon I started tailoring my magic around them and my very fighting style. I found a master that could teach me to fight with weapons, and I used my magic to enchant them. Then after every fight, I just used my white magic to heal my wounds, like so. He demonstrates it by raising his hand in the air and making a white light appear all around him. As the light shines, his wounds start closing, and the blood fades away. The cutthroat's knives had a life of their own. And there were many of them attacking me simultaneously. If I had a proper shield spell to defend myself against them, defeating him would have been child's play. But defending against all those knives with a shield and sword alone would have been impossible regardless of, the com of my combat skills. All armors have their weaknesses. All he had to do was go for the armor's joints repeatedly until he wore me out. Why are you telling me all this? Shouldn't you be at least a bit worried about revealing your great greatest weakness to someone you just met? Hey, you just saved my life, so you can't be that bad, right? Pardon me for interrupting, I hear a woman's voice from behind the trees. But would you, by any chance, be Darren, the legendary savior of the eastern continent? That's where I'm going to end it for this time. Next video I'll try and do chapter 2. This was chapter one, and I think there's about ten chapters. So, yeah. It's kind of an interesting read. It reminds me a lot of the old Goosebumps books where you get to choose what path you want to lead through the book. Like, tell you to flip to, like, page 20 or something like that. And where this one here, you just make your choice and you keep reading. It's it's an interesting little game. I kind of like them. They're, they're fun, just to see how the story comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.